Not only the axial stress, we also need to verify the displacement, like the relative displacement between rail and bridge. And also we need to verify the relative longitudinal displacement in the bridge deck. Also the longitudinal displacement in the deck end due to the angle of the rotation. Also if we expect to have the opening gap on the rail, in that case we can check the opening size. So that size should be less than the criteria. So we can verify it as well using the wizard. So if we try to check the displacement, what we can do is firstly we can generate the displacement verification model, so which is the simplified separate model. So one is for the relative longitudinal displacement between the bridge between the deck and rail. The other one for verifying the displacement due to the train vertical load. So I will, I generated those two models and performed analysis. So I will show you the results for them. Firstly, This model is for verifying the relative displacement and train traction load has been applied to the rail and other condition is the same. Those ends are the embankment part and those center is the bridge deck and they are connected using the elastic link and at the bottom we model the point spring support. So from here we wanted to have the displacement. So in order to have the relative displacement between the rail and deck, how we can get it? We can get from the table results. So after generating the model file, the those group is automatically generated. So this will make us more easier to check the results. Firstly, we want to get the uh, deck displacement. So I will select the desired node, which is the nodes of the deck. And then I will go to the table. So just to specify the only the deck nodes. And then we can bring it to the MS Excel or I will just show you the graph how the displacement will go on. So this is the deck displacement and we can see the maximum displacement from here. If I change the unit And then let me generate the graph once again. So we can see the maximum displacement is less than one millimeter for the deck displacement. And this time we want to have the displacement of the rail. So in the same way, we can get the rail displacement in the table and I will see the graph. And this is the displacement of the rail. And maximum displacement is less than 1.6 millimeter. So relative displacement between those two, actually their ex um, longitudinal position is exactly the same. So just by overlapping those two graphs, we can get the relative displacement between two, which is this picture. So this blue color is the deck displacement and red color is the rail displacement. 
which was less than 1.6 mm. So from these two, we were able to get the relative displacement between two, as you can see here. So this relative displacement should be, uh, should satisfy the requirements of the standard. And as you can see, our relative displacement is about uh, 0.6, uh, 0.7 millimeter. So it is in the satisfaction. Similarly, we want to verify the longitudinal displacement of the deck due to the vertical train load. So for the vertical train load, this time I want to have the model which has the vertical train load and then let's see the displacement. So this time we have the vertical train load as you can see and other condition is same. From this, I want to see the displacement of the deck again. So in the same way, I can select only the nodes of the deck and I can go to the table Finally, we were able to see the graph. And this is the displacement of the due to the train vertical load. And as you can see, it is less than 1.6 millimeter, which is the which satisfies the our design criteria. So by this way, we can verify our longitudinal displacement due to the particular train node.